And one of the reasons that I really wanted to have Christian on the call is not only that I think he is a really smart young man, but because I do think it's important when we're having conversations about race like this to hear from people, frankly, that look like Christian that have also had adverse experiences with this ideology, because what you're going to find in this ideology is not, it is not about race. It is not about fighting racism. It is not about fairness. It is not about justice. It is only about power. That is what it's about. And so um, with that, I, I'd love to, for you guys to hear a few minutes um, listening to Christian and hear, talk, hear his experience in college. All right. Can I go? Go ahead. Well, um, first of all, Carlin, thank you. And thank you guys for having me here. I'm a lot of people on this panel I'm aware of, and I'm very honored to be able to speak in front of you about this experience. Um, so really, my experience with critical race theory came in my interaction with collegiate debate. You know, when I was a freshman in college, I can easily remember the first time I walked into the debate teacher's office and I told him exactly, you know, what kind of philosophers I like. And I said, well, you know, I like Ayn Rand and Frederick Hayek and people like that. And he said, oh, really? And his eyes just went very big. And I didn't understand why he was so shocked at that moment. But as I continued to have more experiences with him and the team, I think I began understanding more. Um, I, had, I, went into, I went into collegiate debate with the idea that we would be all in, involved in a collaborative, intimate collaborative process that is, of course, in a competitive structure, but nonetheless collaborative process that is primarily aimed at finding the truth. I had a very sort of, I would say, Aristotelian, meaning the understanding that Aristotle and the ancient Greeks had of the truth of being able to go about and finding it through logical inquiry. Fortunately, that wasn't the environment that I got into. Um, when I, I remember at our first debating tournament, most of the topics were not even topics that were predicated upon, um, you know, looking at information objectively and empirically and citing studies. Most of the topics were topics that were based on the ideas of identity. And most of the teams that were interacting with those topics were arguing almost entirely from the, their identity. So most teams in the collegiate debate that I did, and for those of you who aren't familiar with um, debate, there are two kinds. There's parliamentary debate and there's policy debate. I did parliamentary debate. Both of them have vestiges of critical race theory enmeshed in them. Um, parliamentary has more so given the unstructured form of it. So one team that I went up against was talking about how it was essential, and they used the word, they used a lot, a lot, a lot of jargon. It was essential to the being of African-Americans to support a certain thing. Now, look, I was a freshman starry eyed guy. I had no idea what any of this meant. I'm like, that's, that's very odd of you. And then, so when I got back to the team prep room, they said, oh yeah, that's, that comes from a Foucault, uh, from a Foucaultian um, theorist called Mbembe. I'm like, huh, what? I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what all these terms are. That's when I really began looking into the nitty gritty of what a lot of collegiates, judges and teams alike were um, estimating arguments with and judging arguments by. And I realized that critical race there was actually quite a very, you know, um, full-fledged um, pernicious force in the system. So I was arguing things that of course were against this kind of idea. I was always arguing cases that were predicated upon individualism, um, libertarianism, uh, libertarian conservatism, a mixture of both. And I had uh, a debate coach advise me, he said, Christian, conservative cases can't win in this space. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, most judges here, Christian, I'm just telling you, debate is a left-wing practice. Now, collegiate debate is not billed as a left-wing practice and it's not thought of typically as a left-wing practice or anything like that when you go into it. But just to hear an academic, a PhD, admit, to, admit that to me and tell me that only a certain kind of um, viewpoint was accessible and allowed in a, in a space in which um, viewpoints are meant to be challenged showed me that modern day collegiate debate is not about challenging anything. And it's about reasserting and re-implementing the preconceptions one has if they have this certain persuasion. So um, I just, I kept watching this thing go, go forward and I kept seeing teams, including the people on my team, make arguments entirely from who they were. If they were disabled, they would like say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about the proposition, um, the, uh, the topic of the debate. I'm going to talk about me being disabled and how I'm under attack by systems of oppression. And they would just completely not only use the topic of debate just to go for that. And I, I know James mentioned storytelling. There are, there are tactics in the debate called retelling time where people from certain ethnic minorities have the ability to go back and say, hey, we're going to retell time through our experience right here. We're going to reinvent time to correct for the supposed harms that happened to us. I mean, if in all honesty, looking back on it in retrospect, collegiate debate is nothing more than I would contend a, a full-fledged training 
people and how to be a good critical theorist and how to be a poor critical thinker. So, and that's one of the reasons I think why I was prematurely kind of pushed off the team because a lot of my, my views were considered offensive and uh, not necessarily all that kind. And, and just for people to know, I'll, I'll tell my persuasion, I am a libertarian. I wasn't saying anything particularly in my opinion, outrage. It is a viewpoint held by many Americans. Um, it is a viewpoint that is based in hundreds of years of enlightenment uh, thinking. Um, well, yeah. So, but you know, but for them, it was not that. For them, it was, it had to do with their existences. It had to do with who they were as people, not who the ideas were in the objective world. So my experience, and really, I've kind of been on a quest in my journey to become a political commentator to really, you know, shine a light on this issue the best that I can with my limited stature at the moment. And because I, I don't think that, I don't think that critical discussion in America should be reduced to who's more oppressed, should be reduced to who's more black or white or whatever, or should be reduced to these sort of broader meta concepts that have nothing to do with anything beyond a particular ideological persuasion. So I'm very, very happy to be here and hope you guys have questions and thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.